line, and we're here today with Andre, with Secure Key, Executive Vice President. And uh, they have some exciting news. They are a Canadian-based company, and uh, they're part of X Canada, and they have just announced a new deal with USPS. Yes, that's right. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah, so we're uh, working with U.S. Postal Services to try and make it easier for Americans to get access to services online. Uh, this is a challenge that many uh, web services face, is how to make it easy for me to show up for service and then serve me there. And so the U.S. Postal Service, is, uh, is what it's doing is acting like a payment network, uh, allowing me to use something I have already to reach my different destinations. If I want to get access to my tax files or my health information, I can use a credential I have already, rather than having a dedicated user ID and password for my tax files or a dedicated user ID and password for my health account, I can use one I have already. That's the basic notion. Great, great. And you just closed another big deal too, right? Up in Canada, is that correct? So we've been running a service similar to that with the government of Canada, and that's a service that allows Canadians to use bank accounts to get to their federal services. So all 120 federal services that now are available on the internet for Canadians who want to present for, for service using their bank account, they can do so. What's interesting about this is when people hear about this idea, sometimes they get nervous. That's they think they have, you know, the bank and the government are colluding and sharing information, but that's not how the service works. You also just scored another big deal up in Canada, right? Yeah, so we've been running a service now for about 18 months in Canada for the government of Canada as our, our primary customer, and we'll add other services later. But it's the same basic notion. So Canadians now can use their bank account to reach government when they want to access, access uh, things like Canada Revenue Agency or their tax benefits or even uh, welfare benefits. They can access all those now using the bank account. One of the important to understand in using our service, though, is that Canadians, when they use their bank account to get access to government, it's done in a triple blind fashion, which is to say, the government of Canada doesn't get the scam coming from, you know, TD Bank as an example, or my bank account details. In reverse, TD Bank doesn't get to see what government service I'm accessing, and Security Concierge, which is the service we operate, doesn't know who the user is. So none of the transaction participants has a complete picture of the user journey, which allows the Canadians to maintain their privacy but still get easier access to government. Is this stuff in the cloud, or is this a platform? Do you secure all the? How do you secure all that data? Yeah, so it's a cloud-based service. The, uh, the the underlying authentication is anchored in the bank. So the trust relationship you have already. You deal with your bank every day and they're very, very good at knowing uh, if it's really you or not. So they're the anchors of the service and all they're doing in this, uh, is saying that the, the person who notes for the bank account is here now. And so they're not actually transporting your name or your address or any other relevant details. So what they would be uh, saying simply is that the user who for the account is here now and they're, they're asking for service. How many people do you have, customers, uh, in the U.S. using this product? So we're in the process of working with U.S. Postal Service to help them roll out the service to their customers. That's something for them to communicate when they'll be putting it in the marketplace. But no, they've been talking about uh, a very quick rollout. So we, I would expect something in 2014 would be something they would be thinking about. But we need to check in with them on their plan. Okay. And we are working with banks uh, here in the U.S. and other uh, customers who like to use our technology to also make it easier for customers to bring their own devices. As an example, if I want to go to you know my favorite bank and use my device, one of the challenges I have today is I typically have to put my client card number into my phone and then my 8 character password on the internet becomes like a 12 or 15 character password on my iPhone because I'm doing the keyboard switches. So what we allow them to do is actually do a very, very strong enrollment of the device. So the first time I'll do that as a user, but for a subsequent visit, I can actually use a four-digit pin to get into my bank on my phone, which is better than what I can do on the web. Well, what happens if I lose my phone? So what's good, uh, we, we can do the same kind of things that we do in payment industry. Today, if you lose your bank card, what we know is that you're going to call up within a few minutes to say I lost my bank card. The bank turns it off, and it's not a lot of electric attack. You're going to do the same thing here. You're going to tell the bank, I lost my phone, and then that, that can't be used for access. Got it, got it, got it.